Okay, so we're going to have a look at the required practical for um, how resistance of a wire varies with length. So that looks like this um, on the AQA sheet. It looks like this one here. So you can see we've got an ammeter in series. The voltmeter is in parallel across the wire and it's connected up to, in this case, two cells or a battery, but we're going to connect to a power pack. So let's start from the power pack and try and get this design on here, like in real, in real life. So I'll start from the uh, red, which is the positive, plugging into my ammeter at the positive side, right, coming out of my ammeter, so my ammeter is plugged in in series. Okay. So really I've actually started with this branch, so I'll sort of try and orientate them the same way around. And then I'll connect into the, where the wire is connected, across here. Okay. Um, and then I'll finish this loop and then I'll put the voltmeter on afterwards. So I'll finish that loop, which means I need a crocodile clip onto the wire. And then that goes back into the power pack. So I can connect and I can choose any length I like. In fact, I'm just going to switch this round. So I can connect up and I can choose any length of wire through which to run a current. So here I'm running a current through five centimeters of the wire. Now I want to place the voltmeter in parallel across the component I'm checking. I'm checking this five centimeters of wire. So the voltmeter will be plugged in in parallel. Okay. Okay, so all set up. This is a bit twisted, but this is in parallel across this component, which is the bit of wire I'm checking. So now I'm all ready to go. Check my voltmeter, sorry, my power pack is set to the lowest reading, two volts. Um, I can switch on and start taking readings, right? Uh, I'll switch it on, take the readings, and then switch it on. I don't want to leave it, switch it off, sorry. I don't want to leave it running for too long because it will get hot. Okay, so um, switch it on. For a length of five centimeters, I'm getting a current of 1.47 amps and a voltage of 0.52. Uh, switch it off. That was my five centimeter reading. Then go on and do a 10 centimeter reading. Okay, I'll take the reading as well. Now I'm getting 0.9 amps, uh, sorry, 0.9 volts, and I'm getting 1.1 amps. And again, I'll repeat, repeat this every five centimeters along the wire until I've got readings for all 40. I'll just do the last one so we can see the effect. So for the last one, I'm getting a voltage of 1.36 volts, a current of 0.55 amps for 40 centimeters of wire. So I could calculate the resistance by using Ohm's law of equals IR, rearranging for R, which is V divided by I. Okay, so that's how you do the resistance of a wire practical. Okay, so I've collected my results. Um, as you saw in the, um, the live video, I only recorded for five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters and 40. Um, so I got uh, three sets of values uh, for um, voltage and current to two decimal places. Um, so this is what I recorded, and then I've calculated this using Ohm's law. So if we remember, Ohm's law is equal to V equals IR. Uh, if I rearrange for R, that means dividing both sides by I. I is cancelled, so I've got R equals V divided by I. Um, so for this value here, I've done 0 0.52 divided by 1.47. I've got two decimal places, um, or two significant figures, sorry, three significant figures um, accuracy in my record, uh, readings. So I've calculated my uh, resistance to three significant figures as well, because I don't overstate the precision to which I've done the experiment. Plotting on um, plotting the three points I have got, you can see the plotting points. This is a line of best fit. Not quite going through the origin, which tells me that there's probably some systematic error in my um, readings. But um, other than that, a satisfactory set of results. You can see resistance is going up um, in a linear way. So as you, uh, well, y equals mx plus c, basically. We've got a plus c on this one. Right. this little bit of plus C here. Um, so that's telling me pretty much that if you double the length of the wire, if you go from 20 centimeters to 40 centimeters, you are pretty much going to double 
the uh, resistance, which is what you'd expect for this experiment. So plenty to think about, some errors to try and reduce. Um, go and have a go yourselves. Okay, so now we've done the resistance of a length of wire practical. Let's have a go at doing the two series resistors practical, which looks like this on the sheet. Okay, so we've got two resistors in series. We've got a voltmeter across them. But this time we also have a switch and there's still an ammeter. Okay, so I'm going to go straight from the setup we had before and just add in the extra components I need. So here's my switch, quite a simple switch, and I'm going to add it in, in series. So if I put a crocodile clip on the end of this, clip onto the switch, get an additional wire with the crocodile clip, back to series, so all good. I've just added a switch to my circuit. I'm still on two volts, so it's not going to get too hot. And now I can just remove the resistance board. And now whatever component I put in between here, I can measure the voltage across it and the current flowing through it. Right, so I can get rid of this now. That's all done with. And now I can start thinking about my resistors. So here are two resistors. I want to put them in series. Just a bit of a bodge job for now. I'm going to clip them together using a crocodile clip so I can sort of hold them in series. Okay, so two resistors in series. So again, you can, whoops. Again, you can see the voltmeter is across the components. The ammeter is in series with the components. So I can turn on my power pack. This time I need to flip the switch to allow the current and the voltage to allow the current to flow, sorry. Okay, so now I'm getting a voltage of 1.58 and a current of 0.16 amps. That's with two resistors in series under the switch. Um, now I'm going to put them in parallel. Okay, so turn it off, unclip these. I don't want to lose where these are. Now, this time, for them to be in parallel, I want to connect up like this, clipping them both at the same time. Try and make sure I get a good connection. Okay, whoops, not great. Okay, and do the same on this side, clipping both of them together. So now I've got my two resistors in parallel, and we're going to compare the voltage and current and calculate the resistance at the end again using Ohm's law. Um, vehicles IR rearranged for R, which is V over I. Switch it on, throw the switch, I have a voltage of 1.10, bouncing around a bit, and I've got a current of 0 0.47, so I've got enough to calculate resistance, so I can compare series and parallel. Okay, so that's the electricity required practicals for the AQA. Okay, so again, let's have a look at the actual results we've collected. When we had the resistors in series, the voltage reading we got was 1.58, now remember this reading was bouncing around quite a bit, so these readings aren't the most accurate, but we should be able to see a general pattern. The current reading was 0 0.16 amps. Um, in parallel, so with resistors in parallel, the voltage across them was 1.10, and the current was 0 0.47, so a much larger current. We can calculate the resistances, again using Ohm's law rearranged, vehicles IR, whoops, vehicles IR, by both sides by I, cancel the I, so R equals V over I. Notice I'm always showing all, every step of my working. 1.58 divided by 0 0.16, and that gives me a value of 9.875 and the several other uh, bits after that. So I'll just round that to a resistance value of 9.88 ohms, right? Similarly, I'm going to do the same calculation here, R equals V over I. So R will equal 1.10 divided by um, 0 0.47. Gives me a value of 2.340 and various other values, which rounded gets me 2.34 ohms. Okay, so we can see that this is approximately four times larger than that. This is nearly 10, and this is about 2.5. Um, so we can see that when you put resistors in parallel, the resistance drops dramatically. 
So um, results and analysis, let's have a little bit of um, physics and understanding of why that might be. So what you can imagine for these two resistors here, if you want to use an analogy or like a kind of um, metaphor, you could think of this as being like a pumping station pumping water. So it's like a little motor spinning and pumping water through pipes. Here is the pipe. I'm going to ignore the switch because let's not make our model too complicated. Okay. The voltmeter is a very special device which we're not going to talk about really for a second. Um, whoops. Let's just get rid of that. Um, I just want to make this line a bit wider. So the pipe is nice and wide. You get to the resistor and there's a narrowing, like a little pinch in the pipe. And then we have another pinch in the pipe for the next resistor. Okay, and we go back to the pump. So where the pinches in the pipe are, it slows down the current. So let's say we're pushing the water around this way, gets the pinch, slows it down, gets to another pinch, slows it down. All in all, two pinches in a row is going to make it harder. When we have the same situation here, another little impeller pump here, spinning around in this direction and pumping water through this pipe, and again I'm going to ignore the switch because it makes things hard uh, to talk about, but this time, right, the water has got two choices about the direction to go. Again, I'm just going to ignore the voltmeter just for now. Um, so when we get to this resistor, there's a pinch in the pipe, pinch in the pipe, we get to the resist res this resistor, there's a pinch in the pipe, okay, and the pipes come back here, and they join together again, and the water can go back on its merry way back to the pump, completing the circuit. This time, with this pinch and this pinch, actually, you it's like that pinch and that pinch and that pinch and that pinch, that the cross-sectional area bit here, if I do that in a different colour maybe, right, this cross-sectional area here, they both end up adding up, so this little pipe and this little pipe end up adding up to making what is essentially a wider pipe. So it actually makes it easier for the current to flow. So intuitively that's what's going on, right? Uh, two resistors in parallel actually drop the resistance considerably. Um, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe and share. Right, now say. <laughs> say physics is best. Physics is best. Nice and loud. Physics is best.